Hello everyone, this is Jozef Not here and today I would like to talk to you about geometry input and geometry preparation for open foam simulations. And this is just a quick video with useful tips, but still I would like to talk about this because this can be very important. Especially because in open foam the geometry defines the features of your models, it defines how much of your model you want to actually simulate, it predefines your boundary conditions afterwards and also where you can put the boundary layers for example and it is very important that you have a good quality geometry for the, a good quality mesh afterwards, for example in snappy X mesh. And usually tutorials and also my tutorials start with the meshing already, with block mesh or with snappy hex mesh. And there is a very good reason for that, because open foam is a CFD tool. It is not a geometry creation tool. Usually in commercial codes you have um, additional tool or an import tool for creation of the geometry, but open foam is not that but still the uh, geometry is very important and what you uh, usually do in open form usually you start with the tutorials and then you immediately go to the real life application and engineers usually take real life geometries and usually CFD engineers do not create geometries uh, CAD engineers do that within the companies and then the CAD uh, engineers have their geometry in CATIA in SOLIDWORKS forever and then they output the geometry in a certain format usually STEP or IGES sometimes in SDL and then what the C CFD engineers do is that they take the IGES and STEP files and then they convert it to SDL. And there are several alternatives for that. For example, I list here a couple of tools. For example, in FreeCAD or in Salome, you can import IGES and export SDL. And there is, I also mentioned Blender because I really prefer Blender for healing the geometry because there you can nicely um, um, move around the nodes of your SDL triangles. So th there is no one correct way to prepare your geometry, but there are a couple of points that you should consider and I would like to show you some of them. Okay, so before I start with the geometry, I want to mention that I will use for that Suzanne, Blender Suzanne, which you might recall from the 2017 Community Christmas competition and I will divide up the geometry of that monkey head to show you how I would proceed if I needed multiple regions of walls and other boundaries and how I would divide up. The, the geometry already, how I would export it in Blender as an example and then how I would prepare it for the meshing, for the tree mesh folder for snappy hex mesh. Okay, so if I now open up Blender like you see here, I use currently 2.79 and what you usually find is a camera and a cube and a lamp and I will delete the lamp and the camera because I will use the cube later on. I will just remove that and then let's start with the monkey head. By pressing Z you can switch between the different modes in Blender and if you click here on add and mesh there you see monkey. If you click on monkey then this will add uh, Suzanne and it is moved and here if you press N then you can select the location for example if I type 0, 0 and also for the X coordinate then it's in the center. And I can scale it, I will scale it by a factor of 10 as you see here and now it is smaller than the cube itself, So, I, which I will use as an external boundaries. But I will now just hide the cube and this is the 
monkey head. The resolution is not the best, but we will take care of that later on. And now you can uh, change between the modes by s selecting the object or the edit mode and also you can press tab. And now I will separate the eye. I select with the right mouse button the eye and then I press Ctrl L and I do not go the same with the left mouse, left eye. And if I press P, then this will remove the geometry out of Susan's head. And now uh, we have three geometries and I will just recall them to be the right eye and the left eye. Eye. And now we have three geometries, the two eyes and Susan's head plus the fourth the, uh, the cube. Now I will carry on doing that with the ears. If I press this button, then I can select faces, as you say here. And by pressing shift, I can select multiple faces of Susan's head. And now I will just select um, the faces of the right ear and in regards to commands which keyboard combinations you should use I refer to a lot of blender tutorials on YouTube I really like Andrew Price's tutorials so go check them out they have nothing to do with open phone they are purely uh, on blender but you can learn a lot how you can modify the geometry and you can also find other tutorials so now I'm mostly finished with the one ear, as you see here. And now I will just press again P and this will separate the selection, just like we did with uh, the eye. And with the eye, we could press Ctrl L and then it selected all the nodes connected to the eye because the eyes are separated from the head A. Ah, and as you see here, I made a mistake. I missed three faces. It's not a problem. I can select those three faces and then press again P and the selection that separates these three faces. And then if I select Susan 001 and right ear with shift, and then I press Ctrl J, this joins them. And then if I go into the edit mode and I select all by pressing A, then I click remove doubles, then re it removed eight vertices, double vertices, which we created. And now I will do the same with the other side and select the ear. So um, I refer to other Blender tutorials in regards to the handling of the geometry, but you can also use other geometric tools to create um, the geometry. Uh, you don't have to use Blender. I like Blender for particular uh, geometries, for more simple geometries, but there are also other tools and you, if you prefer. And usually, most probably, you will get uh, files out of CATIA in step format, so you will not create your geometry from scratch, but still you have to um, co convert it to STL. So this is uh, also there you can learn, a li li for those geometries you can learn in from this tutorial. Now I will just rename this ear to be the left ear. And now we have the geometry separated. No, we did so the same happened here. I missed two faces I just separate it by pressing P and then by selecting Susan and left ear with shift so I select both of them then control J for to join now we have and I remove also the doubles now we have the ears selected and now we have hopefully all the geometry now that we need I will just hide the cube again now we have the head uh, but the resolution is still pretty bad as you see here this is, does not work for the fluid dynamic simulations what you can do is add a modifier at first let me just rename this and now let's add a modifier a subdivision surface which refines the geometry and i usually use um, level two and i ah okay then let's get out of edit mode and apply now if i go back to edit mode now you see that the resolution is much much better of the surface and you can go for an even higher resolution but for this tutorial it's more than enough i will do the same for the ears and the eyes and just knock yourself out go for 
any kind of resolution then your file size the stl file will increase and then snappy hex mesh will also take a lot of time loading the stl files so there it, it is really a compromise of file size and resolution and you have to know which kind of resolution you need okay so the last i i select and then subdivide now we have all the subdivisions here for the monkey head and then let's go back to the cube i will with z uh, change the mode so i can three through it then tab and i will now select the inlet and move it a little bit back and then the outlet i will move it back so this is how i would do it if i calculate the drag coefficient of the monkey head or the flow around this monkey head and now let's just rename the faces this is the outlet then this is the inlet and then i just call the last bar to be let's say uh sides yes maybe sides is the best here so now we have all the boundaries that we need now it's all about exporting and this is a crucial point so uh, let's save well, that's always a good good idea to save and this is my third take here so let's create a files folder and there i will save it and then call it monkey save blender file yes please and now let's export the stl files and this is important especially in blender but also in other tools you have to take care of the, the export first if you just do it like this and export it then um, le uh, let's maybe uh, don't forget ascii you want to export this as, a, as an ascii this is, is always uh, the best in my opinion then let's just export it as a test stl what happens now i open up bash here and let's go to the to the test stl file yes take three and as you see a files i forgot now and there is a test stl what do we see here what happened here we want the different boundaries imagine maybe just open it up in para view here and you can follow along also in ubuntu because you can also you also have para view and blender in ubuntu so there is no difference between windows 10 and ubuntu and now you see that all the uh, boundaries that we separated are in one file and that's not good for snappy x mesh because it doesn't know the, the which part which the uh, part belongs to the boundaries and additionally you see here that it was called exported from blender blah 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 and this is not what you would call your boundary you would say head or ear so there is a possibility here in the latest versions of blender to select this object mode and this will now separately export the stl files so the head the inlet the left ear and let's just go as you see here now you have we have multiple files this looks good so you can use these for the boundaries but let's check out the head stl and it's still called exported from blender blah 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 and then snappy x mesh will call this your boundary and that's maybe not what you want so you uh, would um, manually um, rename it in the stl file but there is a third option so you can go with this and then manually change the stl files there is a possibility if i go i googled here realogic blender export if you go to the home page of realogic of the guys at realogic they programmed a uh, an add-on for blender uh, for older versions and it works also in seven uh, in 2.79 here you see the installation and this is pretty cool and i i love to uh, use this add-on just install it because then if you hit the space bar and then search and you search for stl there is the rio stl export and this is a little bit different from what you saw before with this you can also and also here the second stl export is the same so with this you can separately export the f uh, the, 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 the head the, the, the years and don't forget the ascii then delete the monkey.stl and export separately 
and now if I go, now you see again the files like before, but now it is called head. And now Snappy Hex Mesh will automatically know the name of the boundary. And this is, I think, pretty cool. So this is why I use the add-on of the guys from Real Logic. But you can just go with the standard export of Blender. And you can also combine the STL files into a combined STL. And here you see now that you have multiple regions, multiple STL regions, some of the the software can do this automatically, some can't. This is why I suggest to separately export the files and then maybe join them or not join them. This is up to you how you would do that. Let's open this combined file and here you see that uh, Paraview sees the STL solid labeling, so the different boundaries. As, but again, you can also just import the STL files into the SnappyX mesh dict um, one by one. This works also. This is up to you. I prefer it separately, but I know uh, a lot of people who use uh, this combined way. As you see here, this is now the, the head STL. Yes. So this is up to you. I use uh, this uh, Blender add-on because I use it also works for older versions where this automatic um, this um, feature is not out of the box included. So for older versions, this is also a possibility. It works for 2.76 if I remember correctly. And now you see all the STL files one by one. So you can use them separately. You can combine them as you want. But I would suggest to first separate them and then combine them. So what can you do now? Go to, for example, to my uh, YouTube channel and then go, for example, to my multi-phase VOF simulation project and then enter and then go, go to my GitHub account, download the, in Workshop Exeter, the filling of the tank simulation project. And then if I go here in geometry, I entered four STL files. And for example, you could enter or uh, copy Susan into this um, tank and as you see here the inlet I exported it exactly the same way just enter into the geometry Susan's head and take a look at what happens if you blow water into the face of Susan this is a nice way to try out the, the suggestions that I give you this is one possibility you can do also other things so for so for example here you could enter Susan's head and take a look at it what happens if you splash water into Susan's face so this is my suggestion for the way how I would uh, export the STL files separately you can combine them but these are the points that I think are very important. You can also check out the, whole, uh, the YouTube channel of Toby Holtzman, where he shows you how he would export Susan's head in Blender and set up a case for the simulation. And you can also learn from here, from him. Okay, so let's go back to my short presentation here. If you want to engage with me or with the community, you have different possibilities there. You can like, comment and share my videos on YouTube. You can also subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so. If you're interested in additional information that do not make into a tutorial, then you can also subscribe to the UFOMers Gmail group where I send out e now and then emails with um, useful tips and also notifications when I s uh, will upload uh, new videos. If you want to subscribe, just send me a mail to jnmlujnmlu at gmail.com with the subject subscribe and then I will add your email address to this uh, gmail group alternative you can follow me of course on twitter and linkedin the links are on the main page of my channel with that i would like to thank you for watching and listening and i hope to see you next time